Stand by for broadcast. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to do a number of questionable experiments to see if any of these chemicals can magically repair our Bosch VE diesel fuel injection pump. All of these products make claims of being able to clean dirty fuel systems, and I say prove it. Well, to begin with, our injector pump sort of works and our 1.6 liter Volkswagen diesel engine runs pretty darn good all things considered. However, in the previous video, we confirmed that the plunger that's used to advance the injector pump timing is absolutely stuck. And although the engine runs fine, the injector pump is not automatically advancing the timing as the engine revs up. So as a consequence, we're not getting the full performance from our little diesel engine. Now, if you didn't watch the previous video, well, long story short, we took apart our extra injector pump to see how the advanced mechanism works, and we determined that on these Bosch VE pumps, if the cold start lever doesn't bounce back like this, then the plunger inside the pump is stuck. Since the cold start and the timing advance are directly connected, well, that's bad news, and the pump will likely need a rebuild. Now, the reason the plunger is stuck is likely due to the rancid fuel that has solidified around the plunger during the 12 years this engine was inoperable. So yeah, diesel fuel can get nasty, but it does take a while. However, when it does, it's a mess. So today, we're going to experiment with these name brand automotive pharmaceuticals to see if any of these can unstick the timing plunger inside the pump. Now, success or fail, at the end of these tests, we're going to go ahead and remove the pump from the engine and then disassemble it to have a look at the gizzards. So here's the plan. We're going to disconnect the injector pump from the fuel system in the truck and then set up an alternative container that we can use to supply the pump fuel mix with various chemicals. Now, for the diesel purge, we'll run the engine on close to 100% of this chemical. Now, in that concentration, it's still safe for the engine, so no worries. Actually, this setup is how most people do a concentrated diesel purge treatment. The sea foam, well, it's an unknown, and we'll run the engine on 50% sea foam and 50% diesel fuel, plus a little something something for lubrication. To be fair, a 50-50 mix of sea foam and diesel fuel is an insanely concentrated mixture, and it's certainly not recommended by the manufacturer of this product, but we'll try it anyway. The Berryman 12, well, that's a really strong solvent, and if you ever took a whiff of that stuff, it smells exactly like carburetor cleaner. So we'll run the engine at about 85% diesel fuel and 15% Berryman's. Plus, we'll go ahead and toss in some Marvel Mystery Oil as a lubricant. Now, to enhance the cleaning effect, we're also going to be wrapping the fuel lines around the upper radiator hose. That way, the chemicals can pick up some heat during the process. Heat is always a good thing. Of course, aside from the diesel purge treatment, the sea foam and the Berryman's is more or less a science experiment. And I don't recommend any of the stupid things we're going to be doing today. Nope. You see, the proper way to repair the injector pump is to disassemble it and clean it the old-fashioned way. But there's a chance that one or all of these chemicals may resolve our problem, and in the name of science, we must go beyond what is reasonable. Anyway, the Bosch VE injector pump is a very popular pump, and it's used on a lot of engines other than Volkswagens. And if nothing else, in this video, I'll explain a few things that need to be done if you ever decide to do a standard diesel purge treatment. All right, let's get started. Fast forward a little bit and I have the alternative fuel container in place and I have the fuel lines routed to the injector pump. Now over here, you can see where I wrap the fuel line around the upper radiator hose and that's going to help keep the fuel warm. Right now we have pure diesel fuel in the container and we'll use that fuel to get the engine running and warmed up. Okay, the engine's been running for about 15 minutes and now we're ready to dump in the diesel purge. We're actually going to be doing a double shot of diesel purge. The first shot's going to be a 50-50 mix and once most of that's consumed, then we'll add the second shot which will be close to pure diesel purge. So it takes a few minutes for the diesel purge to completely mix and when it does, you can hear the difference in the way the engine sounds. Now on a Bosch VE pump, there's a rotary vane pump buried deep inside it. This pump has two purposes. It's a lift pump and it draws fuel from the fuel tank and it also generates a modest amount of pressure that's used to activate the plunger for the variable injector timing. Now at idle, the pump doesn't generate much pressure. However, as the engine speed increases, the pressure will go up. 
So, in order to get the cleaning agents to reach certain parts of the pump, the speed of the engine needs to be increased, and that'll increase the pressure developed by the rotary vein pump. Now, on a healthy injector pump, the fluids will be pumped under pressure around the plunger for the timing system. So, now we need to raise the speed of the engine to about 2500 RPM. Unfortunately, on the Bosch VE pump, letting the engine idle during a purge will not entirely clean the pump. Now, idling is okay to let the chemicals sort of deep clean, but only idle after holding the engine at 2500 RPMs for a few minutes first. Also, it's beneficial to let the engine rev up to 2500 RPM, then let it drop to idle, and then rev it again. Doing this about 20 or so times in a row will intermittently pressurize the plunger, and on a healthy injector pump, this will cause the plunger to move back and forth, and it'll help clear out any crud that may have gotten between the plunger and the pump body. Now, when you're about halfway through the purge, it's recommended that the engine be shut off for at least a half hour, and that will allow the chemicals to deep clean the pump. So, at this point in the purge, it's time to shut the engine down, and we're going to wait for a whole hour before we start it back up again. Fast forward about an hour, and now we can continue with the purge. So the plan is to run the engine a little while longer to get the fluids moving again, and after about 10 minutes, we'll shut the engine down and let the diesel purge do an overnight soak. The overnight soak is not something that's normally done, but we want to give the chemicals the best chance at doing their job. Fast forward 20 hours, and now we're ready to finish with the diesel purge. Now after this, we still have to do the sea foam and the berryments. In total, this chemical cleaning will take about three days. Anyway, let's see if the engine will do a cold start on almost pure diesel purge. Well, I'm definitely impressed. It started right up without any drama. So at this point, we're gonna let the engine consume the rest of the mixture. Then we'll go ahead and dump in some fresh diesel fuel and allow that to circulate through the system. Once we're back on regular diesel fuel, then I'll shut it down and we'll check to see if the diesel purge treatment had any effect on the timing plunger inside the pump. Fast forward a little while and we're done with the diesel purge treatment. Now in total, this treatment took about 22 hours. Out of that time, the engine ran for about an hour and the rest of the time was just letting it soak. Now in order to verify the plunger is moving, I should get bounce back like this on the cold start lever when I activate it. If we don't get bounce back, then the plunger is still stuck. And unfortunately there's no bounce back. So that means whatever's causing the plunger to stick was not magically fixed by the diesel purge treatment. Now to be fair, the plunger is located at the lower part of the injector pump and we may be dealing with a corrosion issue. You see, if water got into the pump, it would settle into the lowest part and fester, thus causing corrosion. Now, it's unlikely that any fuel treatment would resolve a corrosion issue. Unfortunately, we won't know for sure if this pump has a corrosion problem until we disassemble the pump. However, before we do that, let's try the seafoam treatment. Fast forward a little while and the engine's now running on 50% diesel fuel and 50% seafoam. I also added a shot of Marvel Mystery Oil for lubrication just to be safe. Now in this mixture, the engine runs about the same, however it idles about 150 RPM less. Very interesting. If you stumbled across this video while doing a search on diesel purge and are confused to see a Chevy pickup with a Volkswagen 1.6 liter diesel engine, well, it's a thing we're doing. Check out our other videos on this truck if you want. Anyway, with the sea foam, we'll do the same process all over again, and that is to hold the engine at 2500 RPM for a few minutes, then let it idle for a few minutes, then rev the engine up to 2500 RPM, and immediately let it idle. We'll do the rev and idle thing about 20 times, and that will intermittently pressurize the timing advance mechanism and possibly get it to move correctly. Of course, we'll do the one hour soak, followed by some more running, and then an overnight soak. I really don't think it's necessary to show all that stuff in this video and let's just cut to the chase. So after a full seafoam treatment, it turns out the plunger inside the pump is still stuck. Hmm, well now we're gonna have to go for the nuclear option and try Berryman's 12. Stick around, this one is interesting. 
So now we have the container filled with pure diesel fuel and a shot of Marvel Mystery Oil. Let's go ahead and add the Berryman's Fuel System Cleaner and see what happens. Now this is a very aggressive solvent and we're likely putting in way too much. But someone has to try this. Alright, let's see what happens. Now this is interesting. After a few minutes of running, we started getting air bubbles in the return line. Ah, that's not good. There should be no way air can enter this system. And we likely have a seal or two that's starting to fail. It could be for a number of reasons, but ultimately it started happening after we fed the engine barriments. Now the engine seems to run okay, but it does sound a little bit different. Very interesting. So it's really hard to say if the barriments is too aggressive and it's potentially damaging the injector pump. We'll do the same process as we did with the other chemicals, but we're not going to be doing the overnight soak. Anyway, the diesel purge stuff seemed okay. The sea foam at a 50-50 mix was also okay. But running a 15% mix of Berryman's plus a shot of Marvel Mystery Oil seems to be a bit too much. And now we definitely have to rebuild the injector pump. No worries, we fully intended to rebuild this pump anyways. So we'll go through the entire process off camera and I'll get back to you in a few moments with our results. Off camera, I finished the Berryman's experiment and went ahead and removed the injector pump from the engine. Unfortunately, none of the chemical treatments were able to unstick the timing plunger inside the pump. Now, if the plunger were free to move, this cold start lever would have some spring tension on it. And as you can see, it doesn't. Just as a reminder, this is how the cold start lever should react. Now the timing advance plunger is located in this section of the pump and there's a big spring on this side that puts tension on the plunger. If the plunger was able to move, we would be able to tell by seeing the cold start lever spring back after it was moved. Unfortunately, none of the automotive pharmaceuticals were able to resolve our problem and now it's time for surgery. Let's start by removing this cover so we can take a look at the spring and the plunger. Okay, so right away I can see some corrosion or rust on this section of the pump. This shim is not looking good. Well, at least now we know what the problem was. Hopefully the pump's not damaged beyond repair. The spring is definitely showing signs of rust. So this pump definitely had water in it at one point. Now keep in mind, the engine that we're using in the Chevy S10 is from a 1985 Volkswagen Golf and that car was off the road for about 12 years before we transplanted the engine into the truck. Now if I lightly tap on the plunger, it does move, so that's a good sign. The bad news is, the whole pump has to be disassembled in order to remove the plunger and clean out whatever junk is causing it to bind, which is more than likely some sort of rust and no amount of cleaning agents would have solved that issue. In the previous video, I covered how to take the Bosch VE pump apart. These things are complex, but there's nothing to be afraid of. The good news is, on this type of pump, the main section can be completely disassembled by an amateur and there's no calibration adjustments to worry about. It's basically just nuts and bolts. Okay, at first glance, the inside of the pump doesn't look too bad. Given that the pump sat for 12 years, I'm not seeing an accumulation of junk. Now, obviously, we just spent three days running various chemicals through the pump, and no doubt they had an effect. But since we don't know what the inside of the pump looked like before the treatment, it's hard to say which chemical had the best results. I'll be right back with a handful of parts that we can take a closer look at. Before we dive too deep into the gizzards of this pump, we need to check the fuel pressure regulator. This guy regulates the pressure of the rotary vane pump and it's an important part that shouldn't be ignored. Now this regulator can be removed with a special tool, which is handy when removing the regulator when the pump is still on the engine. Now on the bench, you can get away with using an open end 10 millimeter wrench. Anyway, inside this gizmo is a spring and a plunger and these things have a tendency to get gummed up. You should be able to apply pressure to the plunger and feel the resistance of the spring as the plunger moves in and out. Now, this regulator was actually seized up when I first removed it and I was able to get it unseized by using a little bit of heat. First I took the o-rings off and then mounted this thing in a vise. Then I just doused it with WD-40 and then used the propane torch to get it hot. Ah, just hot enough but not too hot. Anyway, I cooled it down with WD-40 and then I tapped on the plunger a few times and it freed right up. I tried this technique on another stuck regulator and it worked like a charm. So that's good news. Now the O-rings, they'll definitely get replaced, but for 
for now they're just placeholders so later I can match up the correct o-rings from the kit. Now the tool kit I'm using to work on this pump was $25 on Amazon and it has all the special sockets required to disassemble and reassemble the pump. So these are the parts that we're interested in because the injector timing advance relies on this stuff to move freely. Now in case you're wondering, kits are available to reseal the injector pump and a decent kit will run you about 30 bucks. Anyway, the rotary vein pump appears to be in decent condition. All the veins move freely and there's only a slight discoloration on the surface, which should clean up easily. The cover for the rotary vein section still has a bit of smutch on it and this will clean up no problem. Now remember, this pump sat for 12 years. It's hard to say how much an effect the cleaning agents had, but this stuff looks as about as clean as it'll get. So over here is the timing advance mechanism, which was stuck solid and the whole point of using all the various chemicals was to unstick it. Well, it turns out we had a corrosion issue and it's clearly evident on these two steel shims. These would clean up, however, I'm gonna replace them with some extra shims that I have. The spring that provides pressure on the plunger is definitely showing corrosion on the section that was located at the extreme bottom of the pump. Now it's really hard to see, but in the pump body itself, there's dried crusty diesel fuel in the midsection. So that's interesting. It would appear that the chemicals were not able to penetrate this area and dissolve the crud. It's hard to say if that's because the plunger was stuck and the liquids couldn't circulate properly. The plunger itself appears to be in perfect condition and there's no signs of corrosion damage. Now this doohickey lives inside the main part of the pump body and it'll move back and forth to advance the timing. Anyway, this side of the doohickey is discolored and it does show signs of corrosion. Normally this is supposed to be shiny like on this side. So it's possible that the inside of this pump was full of schmutz and our volley of chemicals really did a number on all the crap and flushed it out. There was definitely crud inside this pump and now it's mostly gone. Anyway, the plunger fits inside the pump like this and it moves freely now. You know, all it took was a little bit of WD-40 and a rag to clean out the bits that were keeping the plunger from moving. This pump still needs a proper cleaning in order to reassemble it. I reckon something like this is fine to put back in service and that's what we're gonna do. Now this Volkswagen IDI diesel engine is over 40 years old and I suspect there are a lot of usable engines out there just sitting in junk cars. Chances are any engine that's sat for a while will need to have the pump cleaned out. This pump worked after a 12 year slumber and we put about 300 miles on it so far but it clearly had problems. It'll be interesting to see how it performs once we put it back together. Anyway, a lot of folks like to use vegetable oil as an alternative fuel on these engines and whatever floats your boat is fine with me. Something to consider is perhaps think about doing a pump purge at least once a year. Diesel purge is the go-to chemical for a lot of people, but we did find that sea foam can also be used. However, I have no evidence on which chemical is better at cleaning the inside of the pump. Eh, Berryman's 12, well, I have nothing bad to say about that stuff other than it's likely something you don't want to use on a diesel injector pump. Well, in the concentrations we tried it. <laughs> anyway, I hope some people found this video to be helpful and entertaining. I'm really excited to put this pump back together and test it out, but unfortunately I'm out of time this week. So, tune in next week if you're curious to how this all turns out. We'll see you next time. Until then.